What is going on, internet? And welcome to another Aircom Review. We are doing a review on a optic today. It is the Vortex Venom, but bigger. Much bigger. It's a one to six LP VO. I have put a lot of rounds personally downrange. I've had almost four different range sessions uh, in very different places and in very different settings uh, with this guy. Different guns, different states. Um, but it was cool. I have a lot of interesting things to say about it. We have a little bit of a discussion about it, but we'll give you all the details and all of our experience with it right afterward from our sponsors. Do you like seeing the boogeyman hanging out with cryptids rolling dice in your front yard? I know I do. If you want to see all the crazy things happening right outside your house, check out TMVC.com. So we originally got to shoot this at a media summit we uh, attended yep. at Vortex HQ in December of last year. Yep. Uh, I Must remember have been fun. it was. It was. It was awesome. It was great. Sorry, you can't go. Um, <laughs> You, I remember, uh, I was busy, uh, stuck on a bolt gun when uh, people were, uh, we were finishing up the range session and you were on an AR pinging yeah. steel at 600 repeatedly, which yeah, so it, it was pretty interesting that we, we would go from like one power and we'd go out to probably about two to 300 yards. And then I kind of kicked it up a little bit to get to four and 500 yards yeah. uh, with this guy. And I took a few where I looped in very squirrely, 55 grand gets squirrely. Mm-hmm. <laughs> at six, but you can do it uh, in the cold, cold. Yeah, um, and I think uh, if I recall correctly, it would, had just snowed and it was kind of making it a little hard to see our, 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 our steel there. Yeah, suppressors do weird things uh, when heat or <laughs> when you get a mirage coming up from it. Yeah. But uh, it was, it was, it, that was my first experience with it. I got to see this with a whole suite of other scopes, whether mm-hmm. they were, ma- they are all magnified, but um, most of them were scopes versus a LPVO. And I guess for the, layman um typically on scopes you'll have like a nice big objective bell and you'll typically see like four to 16 or you'll see like five to 25 but you're never gonna get a one power uh, i don't know that one power actually exists i think a lot of people talk about one power i mean it's yeah, like yeah a, even it's one like power a slightly. simulated one power yeah. yeah uh but the uh concept behind a, a lpvo is that in that it gives you uh as close to one power and a red dot as you're going to get. And it gives you some level of magnification, whether it's four power, six power. I've seen some that go as far as like 10 power to varying degrees of success and usability. Uh, But this one goes from one to six, which I thought was pretty reasonable. Um, This does come in this nice little big box with a bunch of, it does come only with the scope. You will not get a mount. Uh, You also will get, uh, there's like a little throw arm that you kind of screw on there. This was actually doesn't suck either. I was actually pretty impressed with how well that held on. And whether you want it or you don't want it, it's an option. They do give it with you right out of the box. Um, This is a uh, second focal plane scope. Uh, We'll get into the details of why that is or isn't important to you. Uh, This does also come with a, is it 24 millimeter? 24 millimeter, yep. And uh, 30 mil tubes. 30 mil probably being like the middle ground. Uh, I know a lot of light transmission happens on the objective, but how much, uh, I guess, space you have for light to still continue to come into the tube is dictated by that. And also the rings that you'll buy are dictated by that size. It's a very common size, uh, but that also mm. keeps weight down. You got to imagine physics don't cease to exist just because we're talking about. Yeah. Uh, so this thing is about uh, 19 and a half ounces. Yep. And Bobby and I were having a conversation and, or I think all three of us the other day about, uh, uh, Wait. Magnified optic versus yes. uh, a red dot <laughs> with a uh, a magnifier there, yep. and uh, that's where it starts to matter. I think the the weight where you're saving a lot of that because this is nineteen nineteen ounces, where an EOTech well, was like, sixteen and a half before you add the yeah, magnifier. Well, weight and like purpose, like there's yes. trade offs with each. Like exactly a red dot, I feel like especially just a standalone red dot is typically a lot faster. Oh, yeah. Um, you can transition faster. Um, there's no eye box to really worry about as long as you can, for the most part, if you can see the dot and you see the dot on the target, you can pretty much pull the trigger yeah. and hit the target. Yeah. Um, when it comes to using a red dot with a magnifier, you then start having the trade-off of, you still have that feature of you know pretty quick acquisition, but once you put a magnifier in front of it, you're adding a lot of weight. It could kind of mess with the balance of your gun and then also depending on the magnifier you have if it's a really short one 
if it's you know some of them you know they try to shorten them to save space the eye box isn't like ideal it's atrocious right. so <laughs> yeah, typically for, depending on which one it is you might be behind your gun for a second trying to find it whereas with an lpvo you have a much wider eye box you can pretty much yeah. just put your face behind it and get it but not as fast as a red dot and not a actual true one power and what was the uh, eye relief on this it's a uh, 3.7 inches as the eye relief which actually was really good I, I the one thing that always does kind of bug me especially if you had this on like a 308 mm -hmm. or if you had this on like a bolt gun having anything short of that's sus <laughs> that's a good way to have your optic hit you in the face oh, yeah. what i do like too is from a red dot standpoint as far as a one power or like a close-in objective like aiming device is that it is etched within the, the uh, you see this a lot with ACSS and stuff like that, yeah. that like, let's say, cause your battery will die on your LPVOs just cause there's not a ton of battery life on these things. But, uh, even if it dies, you do have a, like a, a traditional, like any most scopes would be that are not illuminated. That it's a black reticle that's going to be on there. And then you do have that option of illumination, uh, whether it's dark or whatever it is, but, um, which is honestly pretty important if you're like, if you're in a dark environment, if you're hunting, whatever, um, aiming into a dark environment with a black reticle, like, not good desirable. luck. It's black on black. You're not going to be able to actually have a point of reference to see where you're aiming or where you're going to be hitting. Yep. So, And that's the thing I really liked about this is not only is it illuminated, but the illumination settings have little half notches between them. So you can turn it off at six and put it back on the six. You yeah, don't have to go dialing all the way back up when yeah. you want to go off and on. So you guys, cause you guys had some experience with this. I didn't get to go with you. You took this out on the uh, DSI MFR yep. rifle and you guys went out to what was it? Five, 600 yep. and uh, shot it into dusk. Yeah, so, it got dark. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I, I will say the only downside, if I had to have a complaint about this, is the tree is not illuminated. So the, the red dot was easy. So it's yeah. zero at 50. We could shoot up to 200, no problem. You're just putting it back on the on the target, right? Once you started utilizing the tree, when the, we were still like two hours from sundown, it was very easy to use. Uh, yeah. and, and so use it. it's got a tree that'll get you out to about 600 yards, which for a 16-inch barrel for 555 grain, that's about as much as you're going to get before it, it gets squirrely way before then, but yeah. you can reliably hit. And it's, it's, a, it's their AR, was it their AR BDC three yes. reticle? Yep. Um, so you did have that as you got to dusk, uh, you start to feel, and I'm talking like dark, like we're looking into a fully shadowed, already tore up, <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, piece of steel. Like it's no longer completely white. We have camouflaged it with hits, which was nice because we were hitting it at that distance. Um, we did start to feel, um, how small that objective was. And we did start to, we again miss the fact that we didn't have an illuminated reticle. We would actually have to aim off yeah. to get we our reference have to put point. The, and I think that's, I mean, that's honestly fairly common amongst sure, uh, yeah. all, all, all LPVOs. It, I will say that, so they do have like covered caps. Yeah. Um, and so you can take them off when you're going to go zero. I do like that they went with half MOA adjustments. This is pretty common. Here, quarter seeing, MOA? Uh, quarter MOA, sorry, yeah. yeah. And then you mm -hmm. have 140 MOA worth of windage and 140 worth of elevation to play around with when you're creating your zero for this, which should be plenty for you're not shooting right. at 2000. No, yards. exactly. I mean, an LPVO, you're not really going to be dialing as you're shooting. It's, it's meant Hold for up to the mic though. It does sound yes, magical. It does sound for zeroing. It's nice. Not only is it tactile, it's very audible. These are resettable as well. You have to take, it does require tools, but you can reset them back to a zero. Uh, and the off chance, could you go down and do what it's not really designed to do and actually add your windage and elevation while you're shooting? Sure. Uh, but I think that becomes a lot less appropriate. You already have the tree there. Uh, you That's should be able to make wind calls. Uh, this is really designed to be quickly used. I see it. I can, I, I'll call a little bit of my yeah. own wind. I'll have a known distance or I'll use a range finder to get my distance. Um, I, I, I do like also, and, and we'll have this discussion as far as use case, uh, I, I, I can definitely see when you're using this at one power, when you're doing... When you're able to magnify your zero, because let's say for my, because it's a second focal plane scope, it's not first focal mm -hmm. plane, your zero is only good for where you're zeroing it at. If I'm zeroing it at 600 and my zero is good or whatever, or even or no, if, you're, if you're zeroing it at 6x. Yeah, yeah, at 6x, yeah. So if I'm zeroing it there, I'm able to see precisely where that aim is on the target, as opposed to when you have like, and you can see this a lot with like pistol red dots, where we'll zero it at 25 yards, but you have a three MOA circle at that distance unmagnified. Yes, you're hitting your target, but you're talking about like exactly, like I want to pick the freckle on the deer kind of thing. This is really where these things start to shine and then also having the quarter MOA adjustments on it. I think you're actually getting a true, you complain a lot about having a true zero. I do. 
Uh, and this is this gives you that capability in a very reliable way. We're, we're already way. unreliable enough as humans, <laughs> yeah, so yeah. give yourself every advantage and get a really good zero. There's, there's a strike eagle, which yeah. is the, the the line above. It's a one to six. So if, if you don't like a second focal plane, second focal plane being that the uh, magnification is not going to enlarge the uh, BDC reticle, right? Yeah. So in the first focal plane, it's going to grow with you. It's going to, that that hold, the, the holds are the same throughout all of the... Uh, uh, magnification here you're likely going to zero at 6x where the bdc will be usable anything beyond that you're just going to be center just line. using the center line and, yeah. and honestly again we're two three hundred yards that's really all you need just a little bit of a hold to use the bdc when you're going out to four or five six hundred the built-in you're going to be at 6x so um that does give you a bit of cost savings because it is less complex. Yep. And that's where you get that extra $100 savings off the the, the Vortex 1-6 yeah. yeah. of I Strike Eagle. On sale, you're going to get a Strike Eagle for probably closer to about $400, yeah. $300 to $400. And then this is yeah. well, 300 or less, yeah. which is really, really nice. I think it makes it a lot more appealing to entry-level shooters that don't uh, that like see this technology and kind of want it. Or I really like it, and you mentioned this, you already have an upper that's got a red dot, and you're like, well, I can just have a second upper that I develop more for like an SPR. I'm, I'm a big advocate of some kind of like upper that has magnification. Yeah. For what it would cost you to have that reliable of a magnified red dot, like have it like, man, if you really went the EOTech route and they're super nice, the red dot portion of that EOTech is going to be a lot more usable at one power. However, right. this gives you Probably about 60% of that usability, especially when you start talking about the magnified end of it. And those eye boxes are Yeah, and it's like the eye boxes aren't that great, and you're making a lot of compromises to basically make a red dot do, like, to do the job. And, like, it's yeah. it, it can do the job, but it's not necessarily the right tool for the job. Yeah. And, you know, some people, they don't like LPVOs. I'm of the opinion that an LPVO with, like, some kind of offset, either, you know, a 45 degree, 35 degree, or 12 o'clock, I is the way to do it. Pretty good. I mean, it worked for the dudes in Nashville, so. <laughs> yeah, so. I mean, if you are looking at that, we'll give a little yeah. bit of a shout out to this Rota Point. point. They, uh, have That's a cool, cool amount. Yeah. There, there's several reputable companies that make, you know, very quality, uh, low-priced LPVOs. Mm -hmm. uh, this is among them, and yep. it must, it's among the, the, the cheapest. And mm -hmm. with that comes the uh, the Vortex lifetime guarantee, right? Yep. And I think that's a huge selling point when you start to get into these lower price points. Yeah. Having been to the facility, having seen melted optics from, you know, f house fires and, and all kinds of crazy damage and, and then the crew that they have testing yeah. and... and uh, you might be able to give them a, a lens cap and they might still replace this <laughs> thing. So depending on how crazy their, their warranty is. If you're in the market... For getting, if you've been looking at them, but you're a poor like me and typically can't afford stuff very often, I do think this is actually a very pleasant, you will be very pleasantly surprised on what you get. I think at the very minimum for half of you guys that have lowers that you haven't finished building, build you one, like a little SPR build, you know, I think that'd be super cool. Yeah. Uh, I think that this makes it a lot more reachable and a lot more attainable for a lot of people. And that for any company that's willing to go and bring capabilities to the hands of good old honest everyday Americans. I think it's pretty cool. If you guys, this thing is live, so you guys should own these. There should be people shooting these. Uh, and if you're in the comment section and want to go and uh, give us your feedback on it, let us know how it went and I'll either discuss it with you or argue with you or we can laugh together. Where else can they go find us and harass us? We can be found on uh, social media at Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at AR15COM. And also there is a link down below in the description and or doobly-doo for our Discord if you would like to join that conversation. That's or a spicy Or head over to the forums where it all started at AR15.com for long-form discussions on all the cool things you should be doing to your firearms. Uh, really support the companies that are supporting your right to exercise your Second Amendment right. It is because of these companies that we're even allowed to have this discussion Stay free, go to the range, uh, go shoot at something that's further than 150 yards.